The weight reduction mods I've made to Apocalypso so far have removed 286.8 pounds. I'm working my way toward taking 500 pounds out of my 1993 2.3 liter Mustang autocross car. While I was installing the aluminum drive shaft, I found something under the car that dictated my next lightweight mod. There was a little piece of petrified polyurethane on my garage floor, just below the driver's side rear control arms. Turns out the rear upper and lower control arm bushings were in horrible shape. They were dry, cracked, and crumbling. This problem needs to be addressed immediately because destroyed bushings will damage the torque boxes and the car isn't safe to drive. On the bright side, I have an opportunity to save weight and showcase an awesome upgrade for autocross Mustangs. I'm installing Steeda aluminum rear, upper, and lower control arms. This video covers the problems I had with the entry-level rear, upper, and lower control arms that were on Apocalypso, details the benefits of using quality rear, upper, and lower control arms, provides some install tips, and reveals how much weight I saved by switching to the Steeda aluminum rear control arms. I'm also going to install some rear springs that are a little lower, and some brackets that will allow me to use a wider variety of rear shocks. Let's start with the rear upper control arms. Aftermarket rear upper control arms are actually a controversial mod for Fox Body and SN95 Mustangs. I've seen a lot of internet posts that claim you should never use anything except OEM rear upper control arms with good rubber bushings. But I've used Steeda aluminum rear upper control arms on my 1992 GT and the steel version on my 2000 GT before the IRS swap, and I've been incredibly impressed with their performance. Quality rear upper control arms with the right bushings will be an immense improvement over the OEM parts. And Steeda's aluminum rear upper control arms are very high quality. In addition to being lighter than OEM and aftermarket steel rear upper control arms, the Steeda aluminum rear upper control arms mitigate the side-to-side -side movement of the rear end and eliminate the nervous feeling that's common with OEM rear upper control arms. The added composure and confidence will make a big difference on an autocross course. They're made from high-strength, heat-treated 6061 T6 aluminum alloy and TIG welded for toughness. These arms fit 79 to 04 Mustangs, but Steeda recommends using adjustable upper control arms on 1997.5 to 1998 Mustangs. Steeda's aluminum upper control arms don't come with instructions, but you can download clear and concise instructions on their website. It's best to change one upper control arm at a time to make aligning the holes easier when installing the new arms. Apocalypso's entry-level rear upper control arms have two-piece poly bushings and use the OEM rubber upper differential housing bushings. The Steeda aluminum rear upper control arms have three-piece poly bushings. The hard center bushing reduces deflection and the softer outer bushings allow for articulation with minimal bind. The three-piece bushing design prevents torque box damage. It's the three-piece poly bushings that set Steeda control arms apart from the vast majority of control arms on the market. The Steeda rear upper control arms also come with poly upper differential housing bushings and bolts. I won't be using poly upper differential housing bushings when I autocross Apocalypso, but I'm still not sure if I'll be keeping the 7.5 inch rear end or swapping in an 8.8 .8 inch rear end. I'll be installing spherical upper differential housing bushings in the future. But because the OEM rubber upper differential housing bushings are toast, I'm going to install the Steeda poly bushings. Looking at Apocalypso's entry level rear upper control arms, it's clear that the two piece poly bushings didn't hold up very well. Every bushing was dry or cracked, the sleeves weren't tight, and there was absolutely no lube anywhere. In fact, there were provisions for grease fittings, but they weren't installed. I don't think these were very good quality upper control arms to begin with, 
but they were set up to fail by being improperly installed. Normally, this is a fairly simple remove and replace procedure. Unfortunately, the destroyed bushings allowed the upper control arms to damage the torque boxes. The sharp burrs created by the metal arm contacting the torque box will damage my new bushings. There was also a lot of surface rust and some lumpy welds that weren't properly prepped. Those welds were definitely not done at the Ford factory. This could indicate a prior issue with the torque boxes or that one of the previous owners planned on making this a drag car and welded them up to add strength. I didn't find any weak metal, so I used a grinder to smooth out the burrs and some of the welds. Then I scuffed the torque box and painted it with rust reformer. It was too cold to color match the paint to the rest of the body, but I can do that at a later date if I choose. Part of me wants to leave the scars visible, because they're part of this car's story. For now, I've protected my new bushings and dealt with the surface rust. I had to grind, prep, and paint both upper torque boxes. Most people won't have this issue, but it's always a good idea to check for anything sharp in your torque boxes that can damage the bushings during installation or use. I used a drill, a 3 8 inch bit, a wire wheel, and some Scotch-Brite to remove the OEM upper differential housing bushing and prep the shell for the new poly bushing. Be careful not to damage the metal shell when drilling out the bushing. It only took a few holes before the dry rotted OEM rubber bushing came out. I cleaned the inside of the shell with the wire wheel and Scotch-Brite, inserted the lubed bushing into the lubed shell, then lube the sleeve and put it into the bushing. It's very important to get the sleeve flush with the sides of the bushing. If the sleeve is sticking out even a little bit, it will make it harder to install the upper control arm. The Steeda upper differential housing bushings include poly thrust washers that go over the small end of the bushing shells. The number faces toward the center of the car. The entry-level rear control arms came with replacement fasteners. I could have reused them, but I opted to buy a 1979 to 1998 Mustang rear upper and lower control arm bolt kit from JEGS. Because the Steeda rear upper control arms come with fasteners for the axle side, I only use the JEGS bolts on the chassis side. It can be a challenge getting the control arm to align with the hole on the upper differential housing bushing. Make sure all the surfaces are lubed and install the upper control arm in the torque box with the bolt loose. Then use one jack under the pumpkin and another jack to raise the opposite side of the rear end housing to help line everything up. You can use a drift to assist in aligning the holes. It's a very tight fit, but that's exactly what you want. This part of the process takes patience and finesse. Removing the exhaust mount on the driver's side made accessing the bolt easier. My exhaust bracket was rusty, so I cleaned it up and painted it. Depending on your exhaust system, you might want to leave the muffler out of the hanger to give you more room when installing the rear lower control arms. Once you have both upper control arms in place, torque the axle side bolts to 70 to 100 foot-pounds and the chassis side bolts to 77 to 105 foot-pounds. Not including the time it took to grind, prep, and paint the torque boxes, installing the Steeda aluminum rear upper control arms took me 2 hours and 39 minutes. But cleaning up the torque boxes added 3 hours. With the upper control arms in place, it's time to install the lower control arms. The Steeda aluminum rear lower control arms are made from high strength extruded 6061 T6 aluminum. They help improve traction when you're launching or rolling on the throttle out of slow elements. These aluminum lower control arms decrease weight and increase your ability to attack an autocross course and the three-piece bushings won't damage your lower torque boxes. I'm using rear lower control arms that fit 79 to 98 Mustangs, but Steeda also makes them for 99 to 04 Mustangs. 
The Steeda aluminum rear lower control arms didn't come with instructions, but you can download detailed instructions on Steeda's website. Just like with the upper control arms, it's best to install one lower control arm at a time. Be very careful when removing the rear springs. They can fly out and hurt you. With the car on jack stands and the rear axle supported, use a jack to slowly lower the control arm and release the tension on the spring. Apocalypso's entry-level rear lower control arm bushings were completely shot. While there was one grease fitting installed on one control arm, there was no lube to be found on any of the bushings. The rear spring isolators were also pretty crispy. And, no surprise at all, the lower torque boxes had sharp burrs, rough welds, and serious surface rust. After grinding, prepping, and painting, they looked a lot better. I also found some rough spots where the lower control arms mount to the axle and clean those up. If you're installing the Steeda aluminum rear lower control arms with OEM springs or stock ride height springs, you'll have to put one end into the chassis with the bolt loose, position the spring on the control arm, then jack the lower control arm into place and install the axle bolt. But because these are aluminum control arms, using a jack under the bushing eye can deform the metal. The instructions say to position a piece of wood under the flat part of the control arm and jack up on the wood. But if you're installing lowering springs, you can install the lower control arm in the chassis and the axle, leaving the bolts loose, remove the shock, jack up on the axle tube on the opposite side, and push down on the brake drum to create enough room to install the spring. You never have to put a jack under the aluminum rear control arm. I decided to install rear Ford Performance C springs that I had in the attic. I might actually use these springs when I autocross the car, so this gives me a chance to see how high the car sits and how the springs feel out on the road. I also found some slightly used poly spring isolators, so I installed those as well. And I swapped in the rubber spacers from the OEM rear springs. Make sure the spring pigtails are at the rear of the car, pointing to the driver's side. When it came time to install the shocks, I wanted to do some more experimenting. I need to know that I can use aftermarket shocks designed for the 8.8 inch rear end on my 7.5 inch rear end if I decide to retain it. But shocks made for my 7.5 inch rear end mount differently than shocks made for an 8.8 .8 inch Mustang rear end. My 7.5 inch rear end doesn't have lower shock brackets. The aftermarket performance shocks I'm considering won't work with my current setup. So I took the shock brackets off of the rear end that I removed from my 2004 V6, cleaned them up, painted them, and put them on Apocalypso. Then I bolted on the Takiko Illumina 5-way adjustable rear shocks that came off of my 1992 GT. The bushings on these shocks are in pretty bad shape, so I won't be using them for autocross but I was able to confirm that shocks meant for the 8.8 inch rear end can be installed on the 7.5 inch rear end with the right brackets. With everything installed, I torqued the chassis side bolts to 77 to 105 foot-pounds, the axle side bolts to 70 to 100 foot-pounds, and the lower shock bolts to 66 foot-pounds. I tightened the upper shock nuts to 22 foot-pounds when the car was back on the ground. Not including the time it took to grind, prep, and paint the lower torque boxes, installing the Steeda aluminum rear lower control arms took three hours and 43 minutes. I spent an additional three hours and 23 minutes repairing the lower torque boxes. I took Apocalypso for a 20 mile test drive. To allow for the best before and after comparison, I didn't install a rear sway bar, and I set the Takikos to what felt equivalent to the KYB shocks that came with the car. I've got many more suspension mods in store for this car, so it's nowhere near as good as it's going to be. But even cruising the back roads, 
the benefits of the Steeda aluminum rear, upper, and lower control arms were apparent. Apocalypso used to be very nervous in corners, even at normal speeds, and the rear end felt generally vague everywhere else. The Steeda aluminum rear, upper, and lower control arms added confidence and consistency with no noticeable increase in NVH. Lighter suspension components react faster. Taking weight out of your heavy rear suspension while also improving composure and traction will make your Mustang a more capable corner carver. But how much weight did the Steeda aluminum rear, upper, and lower control arms take out of Apocalypso? Together, the Steeda aluminum control arms weigh 12.78 pounds. The entry level control arms that came off of Apocalypso weigh 19.32 pounds. Installing the Steeda aluminum rear, upper, and lower control arms took 6.54 pounds out of zone 2. If you've got OEM rear, upper, and lower control arms, they weigh 18.86 pounds. The Steeda aluminum rear, upper, and lower control arms will save you 6.08 pounds. So far, I've taken 96.47 pounds out of zone 1, 100.23 pounds out of zone 2, and 96.66 pounds out of zone 3. That adds up to a total of 293.4 pounds out of Apocalypso. My 2.3 liter has lost nearly 300 pounds, but I still have to pull another 200 pounds out of this pony. I'll cover more weight reduction mods in the next video in this series.